flying through America has been uh, very nice. I've had some beautiful scenery. The ratio of time in the air to time on the ground is, is brilliant. You can be in and out of airfields quickly. Everything is efficient. It's good. Um, mobile phones are working too. Um, America's a good place to be flying. The extortionate charges of India seem a long way away. So far, in fact, that you could be forgiven for forgetting how long you've been flying. Actually, it was the longest flying day that either Colin and I have ever clocked up. Actual flying time in the air was uh, 13 hours 40. That's the longest I've ever done in my life. Into the heart of America, and the spectacular sights continue, even though many of them are man-made. This hangar is the biggest wooden structure in the world. Flying south into California, the team were treated to one of the most celebrated landmarks in the world, the Golden Gate Bridge, spanning San Francisco's glorious harbor. Um, we got permission to actually fly all around the bridge and around the harbor, which is unusual, you know, quite rare for them to give you that sort of permission. Staying overnight in San Francisco, the team had to pick up Colin from his alternative accommodation. Right, we've just got to go pick up Colin from Alcatraz. <laughs> it's just like in the movies. Only kidding. However, the joke soon dried up, and the dangerous reality of the challenge reared its ugly head once again. With about an hour and a half to run to Los Angeles, one of Jennifer's magnetos started popping and banging again. It all happened at once. The helicopter yawed severely to the left. The low RPM horn sounded. Lights were blinking, horn was shrilling. <laughs> and I got my little mega moment going here. Make sure you're running. This was the real thing. I knew I, I had um, an emergency on my hands. Okay, have you totally lost it now? Stay calm. She wasn't totally sure about what she should do, um, and I tried to reassure her on the radio. Does your engine still run? My engine is... Your engine is what? My engine is running. Good. I wish you'd keep a bit more height, because you'll never make it an order if you keep coming down like that. Limping to a nearby airfield, the helicopter began to literally fall out of the sky as Jennifer fought to keep the stricken machine from plummeting to the ground. Her rapid descent continued, but Lady Luck was with her, and she brought her chariot to a halt without sustaining injury. Well, I guess I know what it feels like now. Well, I'm happy to say I, I function. It may not have been totally brilliantly, but at least I did function. I was remarkably calm, and I wasn't, you know, I, I wasn't, I mean, I, I think, you know, I was functioning. I feel quite pleased the way I functioned. I thought I was quite lucky. Yeah, I thought I, I, thought I was quite lucky, lucky, but I'd lo lost all confidence in my helicopter. With America's press corps waiting in Los Angeles, Jennifer took off in Q's machine, leaving him to deal with the repairs. These helicopters are built in L.A., and a mechanic from the factory was dispatched to carry out the emergency surgery. After such an epic journey, both helicopters were in need of some tender, loving care, holding up the challenge for a further three days, as back at the Robinson factory they were stripped and serviced. This gave the team some time for a little sightseeing. Yeah, I show you at 1,400. You're clear to land track, short final factory. Well, 
having drunk in the glory of the modern-day Sodom and Gomorrah, the team moved on and came across a site that even Hollywood couldn't conjure up. This is the storage area for U.S. military aircraft. Stunning. Just stunning. Okay, you want to land now, is that what you're saying? Or you want to look at it for a while? Yeah, uh, we were flying over it. Never do realize it. Right, thanks for your answer. Help, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, there's a bit of game. But look at that. That's an enormous military might. Day 68, and the team had reached Texas, land of the Longhorn and the Nodding Donkey, and some terrible weather. We're in the middle of the desert where we've got this monsoon funnel coming through. It's a notorious monsoon funnel at this time of year. And it's very rare to go with a day without a big, big storm. So you've just got to be careful, that's all. You know, it's... Somebody asked me yesterday, um, what's, you know, um, what do you do when you fly around the world on a trip like this? And I said, well, you play a game. And the game's called Staying Alive. And, uh, and that's what it's all about, really. And the prophetic Colin was really going to have to play the game of his life. As the desert floor heats up, so the turbulence increases. It was always going to be a difficult stretch for the microlight. About 20 minutes, 30 minutes out of, out of El Paso, Colin has a major problem with turbulence. The, the turbulence was getting so bad, there was big dust devils forming all over the desert. And I was getting thrown all over the place, and I was trying all different heights to get out of it. OK, I almost got inverted uh, before I landed. Uh, at that stage, I was only about 500 foot above the ground, and I just managed to recover it for it in the ground. And I thought, "Wow, Christ!" Where are you? What's the situation? Well, I'm down in the middle of the desert, and it's uh, 42 degrees. Well, Colin's got a big problem now with uh, turbulence in the desert, and uh, he's had to put down in a field. It's quite bad situation for him. The density altitude of the air is about 8,000 feet there. It's very thin air because of the temperature and the altitude. The net effect of this is that it makes it very difficult for aircraft to take off and land. Christ, you. Christ, Jennifer. Look, he was done. OK, well, we're down. I, was, that, I think that was one of the lowest times for me on, 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 as far as the flying side went. I remember thinking then, Christ, what am I doing here in the middle of the desert? The turbulence and the thin air made it impossible for Colin to continue, so he decided to leave the microlight in the desert to return the next day, hoping that the conditions would be better. Took the wings off and then was pushing the trike over to, uh, to store it all, and Q had his hand on the propeller pushing and he spotted a crack. Colin's propeller hub is cracked, so it's rather fortunate that he's here on the ground. Uh, it's probably saved his life, I should think. If his propeller hub let go and released one blade only, it would almost certainly, uh, it would almost certainly kill him. The vibration would rip the engine out, the aircraft would lose control, and he would crash violently. Uh, very luckily, the, really, uh, that he's found it. Probably being forced down by turbulence was meant to be. I remember Q saying, uh, I've, yeah, I've saved your life here, you owe me a beer. I still think, I still, I'm sure he still says I owe him a beer to this day, but I think I must have bought him at least 100 beers on the way around, so I, I think we're about even somehow on the beer side of it anyway, but uh, very lucky he found it because it could have been potentially life-threatening. This is a new propeller just arrived by courier and uh, it uh, needs, needs assembly and it's all in pieces. So, with his new propeller hub tucked under his arm, Jennifer gave him a ride back to his wounded machine to rebuild the microlight and get the show back on the road. With 7,000 miles still to go, it was imperative they kept up the momentum. Flying round the Gulf of Mexico to Florida, 
there were countless visual treats in store, and for the time being, no unwanted dramas. Just look at that. Oh, it's even twisting under the water. There's the spout. Running left, trying to dodge it. There was even the opportunity to take a look at NASA's headquarters and fly down the three-mile runway. Now, this is what the pilots of the space shuttle see when they come back to Earth. It's uh, 11 o'clock. We've had an easy start. Jennifer uh, went ahead with Colin uh, without actually telling us, which is quite funny. Hope she makes it. Grounded in a field, cordoned off from the rest of the world, is this the end of the now challenge?